The Cathedral of St. James in Seattle, over in America, and the Church of St. Bede's in Basingstoke, and at one time, though not now, the Priory in Wexford, in Ireland, all have something in common with each other. All of these churches contain what I think is a rather interesting and intriguing focal point in the church itself. And that focal point is the tabernacle. You may say, well, there we are. We've got one. But this tabernacle has been inspired and designed using that first reading which we hear this morning. It has been designed reflecting that incident of the burning bush. The tabernacle itself is that burning bush. And I think this is quite inspiring and quite fascinating. And the priest who commissioned the, uh, this, this design, this style tabernacle over in America, in Seattle's cathedral, a priest called Father Michael Ryan, which made me smile because that's the name of the undertaker down in Newport. He reflects on the website how the sculptor Ulrich Hen had created, as he reflects, for generations to come, something which will draw people into a prayerful encounter with the divine, as much as that mysterious burning bush drew Moses. To draw in to an encounter with the divine. Isn't that something beautiful? What a beautiful sentiment, something that draws us in to the encounter with the divine. Isn't that what happened to Moses as he was drawn to that mountain? Not just any mountain, of course, the holy mountain on that far side of the wilderness. And isn't what those tabernacles in these churches doing? They draw people in to an encounter with God himself. Indeed, doesn't what our every tabernacle in every church throughout the world does the same. In that miracle of the burning bush, the bush was on fire, but it was not consumed by the fire. As, music, as Moses drew closer, a voice came from the heart of that fire to say, I am who I am. The very name of God himself. God reveals himself to Moses. As Moses continued to move forward to approach the center of that miracle, he was told to stop, to remove his sandals, for the ground upon which you are walking is holy ground. In a similar way, God reveals himself to us continually in lots of different ways. We are drawn into that same encounter with the divine. With the same encounter, we are able to be become closer and closer to God himself we come to realize that God isn't somebody distant. God isn't somebody far removed from us. But rather, God is closer to us than we are to ourselves. And I do appreciate that all of this sounds all very poetic, all very saccharine, you can say, almost. And some may wonder why more people don't seem to experience this same burning bush moment in their own lives. Why people, even just out of curiosity, seek to come forward. And I think that the parable of the fig tree, which we heard in that reading, uh, that gospel reading, can really help us to unpack something of this. What the parable of the fig tree draws out to us then is how patient God is with us. 
how patiently God waits for us, how He doesn't ever seem to give up on us, no matter how bad things seem to get, no matter how much of a failure or there is towards us. God never sees that sense of failure or despondency. He doesn't give up. Rather, it is us ourselves, us, me, who rather holds ourselves back from God, or rather than moving forward into that encounter with the divine, we seem to take that step backwards and backwards. And so that burning bush moment, what we could also call perhaps a conversion moment, occurs when we are confronted with this reality in our lives, that it's not us, it's not God, but us who pull away. And this being confronted with the reality is what compels us to take stock and to do something about it. And of course, the wonderful thing about our faith journey and that conversion moment, that moment of rea reality, if you like, is that it's not a product that's placed on a conveyor belt. And we can see that played out in, in, the, in all of our lives, can we? From people who make that commitment early on in their lives to those people who it's the last thing they do before they pass away and everything in between. God doesn't set a time limit, thanks be to God, upon which uh, we are to make that step forward. As the Gospel says, give it another year, give it another year. And we can see this reflected in some of our parishioners who have responded to that, their own burning bush moments in their own lives who have had that call, that uh, conversion moment, who were making their own journey closer to that encounter with the divine through the journey of faith. They have experienced something of that burning bush moment and it's compelled them to do something. It's been a turning point in their own lives which has led them here. And today in a moment, uh, one of uh, one of those people makes that next step upon his journey. Please continue to pray for all of our candidates. The process of conversion towards the Lord, of journeying closer to the Lord, is something complex. It's why we keep returning back to the same subject, year in, year out. Let us thank God for such a wonderful opportunity each year to reflect upon the places where we are, to reflect upon our journeys, even if our Lent isn't going quite as we thought it might go. I shocked the children in school uh, this week on Friday when I told them that I'd been out and bought two big bags of Haribos and I've hidden them in the car and I've scoffed nearly one and a half bags of them. They were quite shocked, they were quite scandalized, I think, year, year four were. Those tabernacles which uh, have been modelled on this burning bush seen from today's reading reveals to us the centre and source of our longing and our yearning, Jesus Christ himself. God made man, the word who becomes flesh and dwells amongst us. Let us draw close to him at this Mass and listen to him reveal himself personally to us by name. I am who I am. Amen.